Well, welcome everybody uh, to Site Leaders Connect. This is our Insight interview series, and I'm very excited. Uh, today we have Dr. Sarah Thomas with us, and she's going to provide some great insight on being a connected educator. Sarah, uh, could you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why you chose to be an educational leader? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me, Catherine. This is quite a pleasure and an honor to be here. So uh, my name is Sarah Thomas, and I am a regional technology coordinator in the D.C. metro area. I've been in education for 13 years, and in that time, I've taught every grade from first to 12th at some point. Um, I was in the classroom for 10 years and a quarter, and I stepped into my role about maybe two and a half years ago. So um also outside of education, then I, well, not outside of education, I'm sorry, outside of my nine to five, then um, I run an organization called EduMatch, which is, uh, which has a purpose of connecting educators together along similar lines of interest all around the world. So, um, so I guess why I chose to be an educational leader, um, I, I would say that, um, that towards the beginning of my career, I felt kind of disempowered. Um, I felt that you know, I, I, I felt that I was spending a lot of my energy in terms of survival instead of growing. So what I did after a lot of moving around and kind of soul searching and getting support from, um, you know, from, from nice people that came along, um, then I kind of found my place um, working with the principal who is definitely a multiplier. And so she gave me the two things I needed, which were support and trust. And um, from that point, things have just gotten better. And so it's just really been my mission to, uh, to connect um, myself, to learn from the best, the people that I'm connected with. So learning about their best practices and also um, creating a space for other people to do the same because that's really made the difference for me. All right. Well, thank you for telling that story. I always think it's interesting to hear how people came into not just education, but leadership as well. Uh, and so thank you for that story, because that uh, that proves that, you know, when you remember your story, I know for me, when I remember my story and why I went into education, it helps others as well. And so I think it's good for us to share those. Um, so you mentioned uh, EduMatch, which um, I'm a big fan of EduMatch and try to connect as I have time as well. Um, can you share some uh insight that you've gained regarding connected education and growing a PLN that may be beneficial to our viewers? Absolutely. I would say that um, there were two main upswings in my career thus far. The first one was, as I said, uh, connecting with the, the right environment, the right principal, the right staff. Um, and then the second thing was getting connected. So it was at a conference. I saw a hashtag and, you know, people were having discussions around things and I have a huge fear of missing out. So I wanted to be part of the conversation. Um, so I signed up for an educational Twitter account. I had a personal one at the time, but I signed up for an educational Twitter account and um, just started tweeting with people using the hashtag interacting. And I had absolutely no idea at the time how much this would change my life. Um, so pretty much I dove in. And I just, I just, I've, I've been loving it. Um, I would say that that after the conference, um, I tried to stay on top of everything. You can't do that. So, you know, <laughs> you can only see, you know, a certain number of things that come across your feed. Um, but I started getting involved in Twitter chats. And after Twitter chats, I started seeing all kinds of opportunities in the local area to present and connect with um with other educators. Um, and then from there, it just kind of grew outwards. So um, <laughs> over time, and I mean, I've just learned so much. So I came for the knowledge. Um, I stayed really for the connections. I've met so many amazing people that are now just a huge part of my life. Um, I'm very honored to call them friends and family. So um, so it's, it's really been a great, great journey. Awesome. So would you say uh, in growing that personal learning network? Would you say that Twitter um, would be a good first step for those that haven't quite, uh, that are wanting to connect and aren't quite sure how? Would, would, would that be a, a good platform to go to? And, and if so, um, what's next? Are there certain um, hashtags you would recommend there you follow? Um, what, what's a great way for someone to start that hasn't really delved into that yet? That's a great question. I would say that it's kind of based on your preferences. Um, Twitter was a great first step for me because I had been on there as an, um, 
you know, I'd been on there on my personal um, Twitter account for like maybe six years prior to that. So I was, I was pretty well versed with Twitter. Um, but if people are on like Facebook, there's places on Facebook to connect. There's places um, if you're on Instagram or, or Slack or, or wherever, there are places for, for everyone to go. But I would definitely uh, suggest, you know, if, even if, if you're not on social media, just just picking one that maybe matches your preferred way of learning. You know, um, I like to do a lot of listening and speaking and just reflecting. So Voxer is good for me, um, and I'm able to kind of you know on my commute state to state um, every day that I'm able to catch up on conversations. So Voxer is a good one for me. For people who like short bursts of text, Twitter is good. Um, if you like uh, photos, videos, and maybe Instagram, Snapchat, uh, LinkedIn is a great one that a lot of people are already on as well. So I would say just take like an inventory of uh, what what you, how you prefer to learn, what would be sustainable for you. And when I say sustainable, I mean, it, it really doesn't have to take a lot of time. Um, maybe, you know, five minutes when you can spare it. Um, and there'll be times when, when you'll have more time available. So, um, in those situations, I would recommend maybe a deep dive and getting into Twitter chats and things of that nature. Um, but really it's all about the time that you want to give it, but I would definitely recommend giving it a shot. Absolutely. Thank you. And I know, um, I know on your website, it's a uh, edumatch.org, I believe. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So I know on there, there's uh, lists of educators to connect with based on their, um, their expertise, their topic and things like that. So I would definitely encourage um, all of you out there who are wanting to connect to do that and go that route. Um, and certainly follow Sarah because she's always posting stuff on, um, on Facebook, on the EduMatch Facebook group, um, as well as on Twitter. And I'm not sure about Instagram and Snapchat cause I'm not on those so much, but probably <laughs> that as well. I know, you know, so, uh, yeah, but I, I, I like what you said there about personalizing that learning experience, um, you know, connecting based on what you're most comfortable with. Um, and so I think that's great advice. I think, uh, for me, Twitter's been, been huge, but there's other platforms as well. So uh, thanks for sharing that. I know that um, with our hashtag, that the, our regional hashtag that I'd started here in uh, the Central Valley, once we went on Facebook and started advertising Twitter chats on there, it really grew because not everyone's there. And so um, I appreciate that you said that because uh, I think that there's a lot of learning on, on, on both areas for sure. So um, what would you say, Sarah, has been... Um, what are the benefits for you of um, of being a connected educator? What do you have a, a story uh, or two that you could share that's really been uh, that, that really shows how valuable that has been for you? Absolutely. Um, I'll share two stories. So the first one, I'll, I'll kind of take it back to. Um, just kind of my experiences early in life, you know, I, I did feel very isolated as a kid and a young person um, because in my neighborhood, I was one of the few people who looked like me. And I was one of the few people who's, uh, whose parents came from, you know, a different country who looked like me. So, I mean, um, I, I grew up feeling very isolated, um, you know, in my classes, especially. Um, but so I think that that has really been a huge driving force for me in terms of getting connected, because when you get connected um, in these communities, then I mean, it's it's like a 360 a lot of times, like you get to know people, like not just what they think about education, even though that is like the driving force behind what we talk about, but also getting to know them as individuals. So I mean, it's just been like, it's been a, a life changer for me. Um, so I would say that that would be my first takeaway. But my second one, things that I never even thought were possible have become possible and not just possible, but they have been checked off as a result of being connected to some amazing individuals. Like I never, ever, ever in my life would have thought that I would be um, a published author, much less a publisher. Mm -hmm. um, but all of that just kind of came as a natural progression of having conversations with with amazing people who um, who had stories to share. We all have a story to share. We all have something that, that we're good at. We all have uh, things that we've learned in life. So, um, so just as a result of that and sharing it in all kinds of different mediums, uh, media, media, I'm sorry, in all kinds of uh, media, um, you know, books have been um, something recently that, that I've embarked on um, and uh, many members of EduMatch have, have joined in that journey. So it's, it's, it's just been, it's been a total game changer. 
Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I, I agree that storytelling is powerful and that really can help mm -hmm. us. Um, and I also like what you said, Sarah, about um, how we all have strengths. And, and I really believe that, um, you know, we don't have to be experts because as we build our PLN, we know experts in certain things. And so uh, I know for myself, that's something I found as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely it's definitely worth it, man. Connecting with people. Um, I know I first I first met Sarah. Um, gosh, like at least two years ago at a at the Mountain View um, Ed Tech Team Summit. Yes, yeah, I, heard I remember. You, yeah, I heard you speak um, about podcasting um, and this whole YouTube live thing, which to me at the time was like here and now. I'm doing it like almost every day, but it was a big, you know, that was a a, a big deal for me. And um, so I really liked your message, and I really liked what you had to say about storytelling and such. Um, and, you know, we all have, it's, it's difficult, like finding time to really connect with people. But mm -hmm. as I learned more about EduMatch and followed you on Twitter and followed the, the Facebook group, I really, um, more opportunities, like you say, uh, we finally met in real life again, at ISTE in different mm -hmm. places. So um, I think that, like you say, you really can um, connect with people and get to know people in, in addition to just in real life, when you, when you have all these modes of connection. So I, I wanna thank you for that. Um, well, thank you. So yeah, no, and uh, and yeah, the, the boxer group that um, Sarah's got going on, man, I can't even follow it, it goes so fast, but it's awesome. <laughs> when I can, when I have the time, it's a, it's a great one. And, and she's got a few going on there. So I wanna thank you for, for uh, you know, taking that passion for connected education and, um, and for building these platforms for people. Um, for sure, I would definitely, uh, like I said, recommend um, our viewers go to uh, that website because there's some some really good stuff on there. Um, so, Sarah, um, before we end, are there any other uh, places that you would recommend people go, uh, either books to read, um, mm -hmm. additional information, uh, websites, et cetera, um, about the topic of connected education? There are there are so many different um amazing just resources out there um i would definitely i i want to i want to give you a shout out back like your your community is amazing the cv tech talk so i would say oh, definitely to check that out yeah absolutely absolutely and, and and it made me so happy to hear you say that uh that the session on youtube live was helpful like it's always great to you know like hear like see the like years later like wow you know <laughs> yeah 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 um, but I mean, there's so many, so many great resources to go to. I know that one that is just amazing is uh, Cyberay Man. Um, if you look him up on Twitter, C Y B R A R Y M A N one. So if you look up his Twitter handle, he has like list of everything. So he has like uh, ways to to get connected. He has like Twitter chats. He has hashtags. So there's that. Um, I also like using Participate dot com to help uh manage like a the twitter chats um uh, tweet deck is another great one i love um and i mean you know it's it's there's there's just tons of different resources out there so uh definitely just want to encourage everyone to just take that first step and uh, just jump in all right well thank you for that and uh, i love that i think that's a great way to end Sarah, Sarah Thomas says, just jump in. And I would agree with you, absolutely. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to encourage you to go to uh, siteleadersconnect.org. Check out that um, database of edu leaders to follow. Sarah is on there. Um, so definitely follow her and other uh, edu leaders. And uh, we'll catch you next time for the next Insight interview. Thanks so much.